Hi, everybody. My name is Mark, and I'm here to present a big, multi-year, huge team effort, which actually started while I was a grad student here working with a PhD student in statistics, Joe Futoma. So this is a project about how we can treat and detect and treat sepsis at Duke University Hospital. So for any machine learning project, you need a highly curated labeled data set. So on the left-hand side, we kind of show an overview of the data set that we put together over one to two years. And on the right-hand side, for something that's ultimately going to be integrated into a healthcare delivery system, you need to build a lot of partnerships and bring a lot of stakeholders to the table to get folks aligned around the new technology. So this model was ultimately trained on over 32 million data points. It covered a set of 86 variables using patient demographics, comorbidities, lab values, vital signs, and medication administrations. Defining sepsis itself was not kind of a trivial matter. It, at the time that the project started, it was 2016. And ironically, since that time, there's been international new consensus definitions for sepsis as well as the CDC, the Centers for Disease Control in the United States, has proposed a new sepsis definition in 2018. So this is our old sepsis definition. This is what we created when we first started the project. We ended up comparing it to eight others at the time. And healthcare is a, is a space where it, that requires a lot of model updating and retraining. And this is just one dimension of it. So even just choosing your outcome definition, you can see that each of these outcomes identifies a very different group of patients, different numbers, different outcomes, and different um, opportunities to improve care for these patients. The next step was to figure out, well, where does this event actually happen within our healthcare system? So on the left-hand side, we try to distinguish between events that happen in the emergency department, so that's the ED acronym, and events that happen in the inpatient setting, so after a patient is admitted from the emergency department up to the hospital. So about 40% of events occurred in the emergency department, and the histogram on the right-hand side shows the average, the distribution of time of sepsis, and the hour at zero is the time of admission, so the time at which the physician in the emergency department places the order for the bed in the hospital. So you see the bulk of the distribution is occurring right around the time of admission, so this is something that needed to be able to happen quickly and early on in the course of this hospital stay. <clears throat> this shows the trends across the three hospitals. So Duke University Health System, we have the large hospital right here, probably a half mile away. And, and then we have a community hospital up on Roxborough Street and a community hospital in Raleigh. And across all settings, we saw that sepsis was mostly happening very early in the course of the stay. Then we get to the point where, okay, now we actually need to build this model and build out the technology. This was a, a collaboration with Catherine Heller and Joe Futoma in the statistics department. It was a two-phase model. The first model imputed continuous functions for the labs and vital signs, and then regularly sampled every hour and fed into a recurrent neural network. So every hour we generate predictions for whether or not the patient will become septic. So here's just another schematic to show. One of the things that in healthcare is true outside of trial settings, if you're just in the hospital, you get different pieces of information sampled at different rates. So sometimes you'll get a lab ordered once every three days. Other times you'll get vital signs measured ordered every two hours per se. So we have to impute those continuous functions and then sample them regularly and feed that into the recurrent neural network to generate the predictions between zero and one. Then we did a model evaluation. You'll find here that we compare both to machine learning methods as well as some of the acronyms at the bottom, SIRS, NEWS, QSOFA. Those are clinical algorithms. So in medicine, you always have to compare against just the clinical heuristics that the physicians have come up with over time. Another type of evaluation, so this is a temporal evaluation. This was a multi-year effort starting in 2016. We went live in November of 2018, so we did a separate evaluation of six months pre-implementation. So between March and August of 2018, and then we did a three-month silent mode where we actually put it in production and just observed the model behavior. We had to design an entire workflow for this system that leveraged rapid response team nurses. The next few slides I'll have to go through quickly. This is just a user interface, a work stream diagram. We triage patients. The user moves them to monitoring and decides whether or not to treat the patient. 
This is the last slide. So essentially our, our national compliance with recommended sepsis treatment has increased. We're doing a more formal kind of clinical outcome assessment right now. Like I mentioned, this was a huge effort. So thank you for having me and happy to talk with folks about this or other related healthcare applications.